Do not be scared. This is not Medusa looking you in the eye. You will not turn to stone if you look at me. This is just what I look like without makeup. So don't be a jerk. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Deja. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, hey, thanks for stopping by. I know I look scary right now. I look like near death, but I just woke up. I'm getting ready to go to work. So I figured, you know what? Why not do a get ready with me slash chit chat video? I most likely will not be telling you guys the products I'll be using because I want to talk about something that is, you know, something that I've kind of been wanted to talk about for a while. As a fellow LA native, I feel like this is something that a lot of people don't talk about. What I mean is celebrity obsessed culture. And like I said, I'm a Cali girl, so I feel like I get a pass to talk about this. Oh, before we get down to this video, don't forget to give it a big old thumbs up for showing up on camera looking like near death. Also, don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos every single week. Also, click that bell so you don't stop my post. And if you want to follow me on all my social media, that will be linked down below. Okay, let's talk about celebrity obsessed culture. What I mean by celebrity obsessed culture, oh god, where's my powder? People not understanding that celebrities are people. Trust and believe I get sometimes that, you know, in some parts of the world, you don't, you know, walk outside and see a Kardashian walking into a Starbucks. Like that's not something that you see on a daily basis, but people just forget sometimes that celebrities are in fact people and deserve to be treated as such. Now I got this idea from this YouTuber, I think his name was like Steve or Steven Dang. He did a video about, um, fans of k-pop idols um being mad crazy and disrespectful to their um idols and stuff and it's called how not to treat a k-pop star i'll link it down below so you guys can check it out he was basically showing different examples of how you know fans go too far with their idols and there was a video of um kim taehyung from bts and he was at a i think like a fan meet like a signing in korea and he went in to give a fan, I think it was like a high five or a handshake, and she slapped his hand away as if he was just like some regular person. It's like, that's not how you treat your, your celebrity crush or like your bias or whatever. And then there's the other video of my bias from GOT7, Jackson Wang. He was surrounded by a crap ton of fans and he you know kept asking over and over for the fans to you know give him space and to back up and none of them would do what he was asking so kindly for them for them to do for him and tell me why in the video i see him get on his knees his hands and knees to get air and to have space to breathe because there were so many people in his area and i was like okay this is ridiculous and I don't understand why that happens. And you know, like I said, for some people seeing a celebrity just out in the open is a rarity. So, I mean, depending on the person, you're gonna wanna, you know, get a picture, or, you know, Snapchat that moment because you'll never know if you'll ever get to meet them ever again. But at the same time, you have to remember that celebrities are people and that they deserve to have some level of privacy and I get that there's the argument like, oh, you know, they're famous, they know what they were signing up for, da 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 da. But like, it's just like a common sense thing. Like, if you were out in public in your Nike slides and sweats at the grocery store, getting a hot and dog to have a little uh, Netflix and chill kind of day, and you saw a fan of yours, and you were like, oh my God, I I'm not looking my best right now. I really don't wanna take pictures, but they ask you anyway. If you know for a fact, that you would hate to be in that kind of situation, why would you do that to somebody else? I'll wait. I just don't understand why people do that, especially if they know for a fact that if they were in that situation, they would hate it. Um, and that's even going, going as far as, um, you know, invasion of privacy, you know, those stories of like stalkers showing up at, you know, celebrities' houses. Like, I remember there was this one story about this guy um, that kept showing up to Taylor Swift's apartment in New York, I think. That was like a couple of years ago. Um, that's scary. You know, celebrities, they're not 
artifacts in a museum and they're not animals at the zoo. You don't get to pick and prod at them when you want to and just mistreat them, you know what I mean? Another thing is um, how people are so like invested in celebrities' life that they feel as though they have to know absolutely everything going on with that celebrity. Like, perfect example, um, Cardi B just had her baby, right? Culture, is that her name? I think that's her name. Um, and people are like up in arms and, you know, upset that she won't show her child on social media. Like, first of all, that's not your kid. That's her kid. Why are you so invested and why do you feel like you have a right to see a baby that doesn't even belong to you? You know what I mean? That's her baby. I'm sure she doesn't want like just random people on the internet knowing what her baby looks like. Um, now on the other hand, there's, you know, Kylie who just had her baby who's freaking beautiful and adorable and I swear to God, Kardashian babies grow within five to 10 business days. Even with Kylie, I mean, I can understand why she would kind of, you know, pull back a little bit when it comes to showing her child because the internet is malicious and it's evil and, you know, people have nothing but bad intentions nowadays and, you know, something could easily happen if she shows too much of one thing. So I can understand why she kind of like pulled back a little bit in showing her child. I think people really don't know how to treat celebrities at all. You know what I mean? Like if you're out in public and you get the chance to meet a celebrity, a lot of these people act so out of pocket and are just mad disrespectful for no reason. I remember seeing this video of Harry Styles meeting this fan. I don't know if it was here in LA or somewhere else, but she was being like, Oh my god you're doing this wrong because i guess she wanted to do like a peace sign to the camera or like a selfie or something and she was being so rude it's like you say that you love these celebrities and you can't wait to meet them and then when you do meet them you don't know how to act right <laughs> like i don't i don't get that that's rude and so disrespectful i'm gonna put my stuff away as i go because i'm getting so confused i just don't understand why people do that kind of stuff because you know, these celebrities are taking time out of their day to say hi to you and take a picture with you and you don't know how to act like, mm, even YouTubers sometimes. I mean, I don't want to say, I guess you could say certain YouTubers are considered like at a celebrity status like Lily Singh. Everybody knows Lily Singh, Superwoman, and she's just everywhere. Even YouTubers get mistreated. And oh, the biggest one, the most recent one was the Ace family. Um, first of all, there are people that are really out here claiming and swearing up and down that they staged their own robbery but at the same time i get why people would think that because the thumbnail was pretty questionable when i saw it i'm like why are you posing with your daughter for a thumbnail of a break-in like i get that like that's freaking weird Hello, so this video was recorded before the Ace family released their video addressing the entire issue and I can agree with Austin. I don't think that they showed too much of their lives in all honesty. I think what led to the robbery was the fact that Ace family members, quotation around that, would just camp out in front of their house whether it be day or night and put their address and their house on Snapchat and Instagram and Twitter. Like if you're one of the ace family members that did that newsflash you're not an ace family member you don't care about them you invaded their privacy and that's all there is to it if you really love somebody then you wouldn't go out of your way to make them feel uncomfortable and that's it but to go out of your way and really stage like a robbery that's bonkers i don't think the ace family is that desperate for subscribers and views they've been growing at a very rapid pace um so I highly doubt that they would really stage something like that. And if they did, you know, honestly, that's sad and pathetic. And I really do love the Ace family very much. And I don't know how I would feel if it turns out that they actually did stage all that, but I highly, highly doubt it. You can tell in like Austin's live streams and Catherine on Twitter and you know, all their activity and you can just tell, like there's no way that they would stage a break-in. They don't need any more attention than they already have. Like they have a new million subscribers every couple weeks. Uh, they're pretty, they're, they're good to go. They're fine. <laughs> but yeah, I just feel like people are, you know, really overstepping it when they say that celebrities, you know, like they know what they're signing up for and like they shouldn't even have privacy. And that doesn't make any sense. You should automatically just have more respect for 
people, regardless of their status, especially fangirls. Another experience, I almost forgot about this, Warp Tour with Chase Olenek. Um, quick little story time. So at Warp Tour, y'all know that I went to Warp Tour. It was the very last one. It was in Pomona and I went to not only support Chase Atlantic, but fulfill my 10 year old fantasy and just go. <laughs> so it was like a dream come true for me. At one point during the day, uh, my friends and I were kind of stuck as to, you know, what we we're gonna do next or, you know, what we could do to pass the time until, um, you know, another band of ours that we wanted to see, you know, finally goes up. I see Christian walking up from behind my friend um, along with Mitchell and he saw us and he was like, hey, what are you guys doing? And we're like, oh, we're just trying to figure out what to do um, until so-and-so performs. And he's like, oh, well, we're gonna go see um, Riley perform. He's across the fairgrounds so if you guys wanna come with us. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. So we just, you know, collected our things and we started to head to the other side of the fairgrounds. I noticed that there was like a small group of girls kind of like tailing behind us. And at first I didn't really think too much of it. I didn't, you know, think it was anything odd. I just figured that they were heading to the same place or they were going somewhere else. But they were getting closer and they had their phones out and they were just like, they looked like lost puppies basically. And I was like, okay. <laughs> we got to Riley's stage and he was about to go on to perform. Keep in mind these girls were still behind us and now I, it, like, it clicked to me. They were just following us and I was like, okay, that's um, that's weird. I did not hear them say a word. They were not saying anything. And I'm like, so why are you guys following us across the fairground? Like, that's weird. <laughs> um, and we were watching Riley's set. Um, we we're all chilling, just having a great time. Riley's incredible, by the way. So if you guys are going on Chase's tour and you see him perform, oh my God, you're in for a treat. He is so freaking amazing. But, um, these girls had their phones out and were trying to ask Christian and Mitchell for selfies. And here's my thing. My thing is that unless, you know, a celebrity is having like a meet and greet willingly or, you know, um, signing merch and doing all that, just don't ask them for pictures, you know, just kind of pull back from that. And again, I understand that for some people, it's a rarity to see celebrities just walking around out in the open like it is in California. I've been around entertainers and, you know, um, celebrities my entire life. So it doesn't really phase me when I see celebrities. It, it's just like, you know, they're just regular people. This is so hard, guys. Oh, there's a lot of getting to my eye. <laughs> Not today, sorry, time. Okay. Another thing I kind of wanted to talk about, you know, while we're, you know, talking about what we're talking about is Twitter. So I love Twitter. We all love Twitter. Twitter is a place where memes and trends are born. But there's just one thing that I just don't understand is that people will literally go out of their way to air out all of their dirty laundry on Twitter. I don't get why people think that Twitter is like their own, you know, personal diary where they just wanna, you know, put all their business out there. But that's just like weird. Especially if like that business has to do with, you know, you and your partner in a relationship or like you airing out your insecurities for the world to see. Like Twitter is not the place for that, I'm sorry. Twitter is its own level of savagery. I just like, I see a lot of people who have like problems with their boyfriends or problems with their girlfriends. Instead of, you know, talking to their partner about their issues, they just air it all out on Twitter. And it's like, first of all, no one cares. <laughs> and second of all, you know, if nobody's messaging you and asking you, hey, you know, are you okay? I saw your tweet then nobody cares and they're literally gonna just laugh at you. I hope you understand that people laugh at your, like, issues on Twitter. You know what you need for that? A journal. Especially if it's like, oh, I feel like my boyfriend doesn't love me or, oh, I feel like 
I do all these things for you and I get nothing back and like all this, like, oh my God. Like, oh my God, if you feel some type of way about your partner, your partner should know about that, not your 10,000 followers. Like, what are you doing? Ooh, I don't get it. And it's, it just makes me cringe so much. Um, I don't know, what else can we talk about? I guess, let's talk about what happened with, um. Gabriel Zamora, Laura Lee, Nikita Dragon, Manny Mue, and my baby Jeffree Star. Like, y'all, the beauty community is quaking. I was not expecting all of this drama. I'm so shook. I was so taken aback when all of this started happening. And it's funny that it all happened, you know, after Shane's super awesome series about Jeffree. That was just in freaking insane to me. How, you know, all that all that drama just came to light. And Jeffrey called it too on his Twitter. He said, there's only four months left, 2018. There's still so much to be revealed. And sure enough, everything just came out. And it, that was just crazy to me. And Gabriel's video and his apology was so freaking cool. I really do give him props for, you know, speaking his truth because I know a lot of content creators would be so scared to speak up, especially, you know, beauty gurus. So, I mean, I commend him for, you know, saying what he had to say. And I was shook to hear what he said about Manny, like him saying that Manny constantly talks about Jeffrey and like always saying all these things. And I'm just like, whoa! When I tell you I could not watch when I saw Manny's um, notification, cause I am subscribed to him. I hope that Manny learns from his mistakes. I hope he takes time to apologize to Jeffrey you know, directly, you know, all that jazz, man to man, eye to eye, because, you know, we're not kids. He's almost 30, so I feel like he needs to, you know, own up to his, he needs to own up to what he did and just become a better person that we all know him to be. Um, I believe in giving people second chances, so. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't happen. My favorite part. My second to last step is highlighting the crap out of my face. So start the nose. Ooh, look, a beacon of light. This can stop LA traffic. Wow, do you see that? I could literally stop traffic with this. I know this is weird. I don't use a fan brush when it comes to the highlight. I use this fluffy brush. I don't know, it just, I have more control to where I put it. So I just use this to apply my highlight Ooh, wow look at how blinding yeah it's not neat i guess that's all i can i really want to talk about today you know that's all that's really been on my mind um But yeah, that is it for today's video. This is my completed look. It's not anything crazy. It's just a regular makeup look that I do all the time. But I hope you guys enjoyed this first get ready with me slash chit chat video. Well, I guess my second. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. That helps me out so much. Also, don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos every single week. Also, click that bell so you don't miss out whenever I post. And if you want to follow me on all my social media, that will be linked right down below. Until I see you guys again next time, I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye!